Hello and welcome to the final part for our Milky Way series. What we're going to do today is something a little bit unusual because normally when we're taking images of the night sky we're trying to remove everything that could in any way be disturbing. Aircrafts, satellites even. But today we're doing the exact opposite. Do you remember in uh, the first part we created that time lapse here? And um, if you look at it, how much action is going on there and how much stuff is flying across the sky well, I said it before, I am no astronomer, I am simply a guy who likes to watch and photograph the night skies, so I can't tell them apart what are satellites, there might be the odd meteorite in it, but uh, what we're going to do today is we are merging them all together into one image. So our starting point for today's action is back in Lightroom and uh, you may remember these images, you've seen them all before, that is the source material we used for the time lapse. Uh, we're starting here at image number 12 going all the way back to 299. So we are talking about 287 images which have been used for the time lapse. Now what I did, I went through every single image and um, in case the image had some sort of action going on in the sky, like what we see here, come on, make it a little larger, like this one here. All of these images have been rated with a three star rating by me in Lightroom. But before we go into that, I took here right at the beginning, I took 12 images out of them and we stacked them together in sequitur first just to use them as a nice base image where we are going to have all the other images on top of it. Um, yeah, come on, let's switch over to the PC and have a quick go on Sequitur. All right, just 12 of the images. I loaded them here, you know, exported as TIFF, uncompressed. Um, simply took them all and uh, imported them in Sequitur. Told an output image, stacked. Our composition mode is aligning the stars because obviously we don't want to have star trails. Freeze the ground and what I did here, you know that all from uh, the second video of our series, I just marked the sky region and let it stack the image. This is all I did and we're going back to the Mac into Lightroom where we are pimping that image a little bit. I've imported that image back into Lightroom and this is what Sequitur came out with. This is fine. What I did now, I pimped it a little. If you're watching part two, stacking and processing the Milky Way images, I demonstrate all the techniques I used. Some lots of filters in Lightroom and uh, then went into working out the details in Photoshop. This is pretty much what I did and the result is this one here. This image now will work as our base image for merging all the other images on top. And we need to go back to all of them. i activate the filters where I said rated images with three stars. You remember, three stars means all of these have some sort of action of the Milky Way in it. What I do now here from 1 to 10 is our first batch we are opening or editing as layers in Photoshop. Let's load them in Photoshop and uh, yeah it's gonna take a moment because uh, there is quite some data to process. Okay the reason why I'm not loading all of the 148 images in one go into Photoshop is uh, yeah, there is no uh, speed, no working speed left. Uh, that computer, that machine would simply be down on his knees. It's done me so well, I think it uh, doesn't deserve something like that. Okay, Photoshop finally done loading of all the 10 images we've selected here as layers already. We do not really care about in which order they are, because it doesn't really matter. And another image I have here is our base image. Take the base image, click. Um, press and hold the shift key and move it with the mover tool over here and now very important we put our base layer really at the bottom. Now we are making one layer after another invisible. We do not really select anything because all that matters for us is now the position of the image 
and we can try to bring our whatever it is satellites in, in that case I suppose back into the image so the way how we're doing it you remember layers and layer masks the first thing I do I add a black layer mask to make the first layer invisible we have a few options with these uh, layer masks now you remember maybe from the beginning alt clicking them shows us the layer mask shift clicking disables the layer mask it means the mask is still there but it's simply not visible and the reason why I'm doing that when I'm now zooming in remember black layer mask and we are using a white brush click on the beginning of that first whatever it is satellite or meteor trail then press and hold shift and click at the end and we're making our mask visible again then we are having our base layer and that little streak is in there and the reason for that now we're alt clicking it and this is all we've done we have a black layer mask and only that white line here which we created in it lets the part of the image be visible so alt clicking it here it is shift clicking it disabling the layer mask that is our original image and now this is pretty much the way I work my way through I make the, make the next layer visible at a black layer mask by alt clicking it then shift click the layer mask with our brush in white click at the beginning here shift click at the end shift click the mask and this is what we did so we already have blended two images in the third one aha uh -huh, here's a little bit more more action going on that is uh, the third part of what we just did and here's something else coming into the image again really can't tell you is it uh, meteorite is it uh, satellite no idea honestly again adding a black layer mask shift click to make it invisible click the beginning of this streak here shift click the end of it click the beginning of that one shift click the end of it shift click into the mask zoom back out so you are getting the idea how it works and uh, this is how I work my way through the first set of images now and then I show you how to get the next set in. good as you can see it is quite a lot of work and uh, it is a bit time consuming but uh, we already begin after we've blended 10 images in to see what we want to achieve for ease of use I'm doing the following I am making the base layer of a base image invisible this um, only these black streaks are what we've blended in so far and now I simply merge the visible ones activate base layer again and uh, we need a fresh batch of images so we're going back to Lightroom doing exactly the same this time with the next set of images let's choose 11 to 20 and uh, the same here edit in open as layers in Photoshop and wait until uh, we uh, we have them in Photoshop over here good finally our fresh batch is loaded you remember this one here was the one where we were working in so this time from where we've just imported all the, the, fr the fresh the new 10 layers I select by shift clicking all of them layers um, choose my mover tool and now click in the image press and hold shift and move them all over here and here is the fresh batch of images loaded as layers right into Photoshop on top of the others we've al we already did that way now I have uh, the unthankful task to work my way through all the 148 images and um, yeah I'm just working my way in and uh, once I'm done I'll be coming back oh wow three hours later it took me three hours to merge all of these images together I think it's really well a job for someone who needs to be punished um, if we're looking at uh, the final result, final image, make it a little larger. The thing is, I don't even like it. And the main reason why I don't like it is uh, the thought. We have in the center of the image Milky Way, something that is, I mean, represents eternity 
for me. I know with a duration of two hours, all we've captured or what we've additionally captured in the images is countless satellites. Then we have here that diagonal, that's definitely two aircraft. Um, here in the center right, what that is, something definitely flying or moving low across the sky in a curve even. No idea what that could be. And uh, well, potentially we have the odd meteorite in it, uh, but I really doubt it. And looking at this, how many satellites in two hours were crossing the sky? That is actually a pretty, how to say that? It's a, it's a devastating thought for me. And with several programs and many more satellites to be launched for, well, good reasons, yes, but it really looks like the night sky will never ever look the same for us in the future. And I think this is the main reason why I don't really like the result. On the positive side, what I wanted to demonstrate to you today was uh, how to do it. So how to merge that kind of image where you really only have tiny little bits and parts in every single frame which you want to merge into something else. Quick uh, technicality recap. The way you do it, you work in layers in Photoshop. Every single layer is getting a black layer mask to make it invisible. And we are painting in with white. The painted in bits will be the bits that are visible in the final images. And with a shift click on the mask, you can actually disable it. So you can see exactly, basically through the mask, what you are working on, which part you want to paint in to make them visible. That's pretty much it. And the rest, uh, what you need is time. <laughs> so if you want to give it a go, or even if you want to count the satellites and aircrafts, uh, I didn't count it. If uh, anyone does want to give me a hint how many objects are here flying through the night sky, I'd be thankful for it. So you made it to the end for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you learned a new Photoshop skill. Always good to learn new skills. If you liked it, hit like, leave me a comment, any questions, use the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, maybe tell your friends, I could really do a little bit of growth here on my channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you here soon again.